Let's make Gwen Stacy's pink cardigan. To start, make a slip knot. And we're going to do foundation single crochet. If you do not know how to do foundation single crochet, then chain 53 and do a return row of single crochet in the back bump. But for the foundation single crochet, we want to do 52 of them. So to start, we chain two and end the first stitch, go through two of the loops, pull your yarn through, yarn over and go through one, yarn over and go through two. That is a foundation single crochet. You're making the chain and the single crochet at the same time. Always go through two loops. Pull through one, that's your chain. Pull through two. So this first color that I'm starting with is taffy. And as you know, we have five colors of pink to work with. And pink is not the easiest color to oh, match and blend well. Okay, so make your 52 foundation single crochets or chain 53 and do a return row of single crochet into the back bump. And we'll meet back when I get my 52 completed. Okay, so I have my 52 foundation single crochet. And this sweater will be like for a size medium to large. It's supposed to be oversized and baggy. To make it bigger, you make this longer. To make it smaller, you make this shorter. For example, I have 52. 13 of the stitches are gonna be my sides. So 13 and 13 is 26, and the back of the collar is 26 stitches. So to make it bigger, say you did 30 stitches, you would want 15 and 15. So you would chain or foundation single crochet 60. If you wanted it smaller, so mine, my back is 26, say you wanted it 20. So you would do 20 and then 10 and 10. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I'm not saying that 20 is the small size and I'm not saying 30 is extra large. That's something you'll have to play with, but this will come out to a medium to a large, and it is an oversized slouchy type sweater. That being said, let's go to the next row. So we're going to chain two. That will count as a double crochet. Turn our work, and in the same stitch, the very first one, we do a double crochet. That is our increase stitch. We will do an increase stitch at the beginning and the end of each row for several rows. The next stitch is going to be a corner. So we're going to put three double crochets into the next stitch. Okay, so we only want to use 13, so we have done two. So in the next 10 stitches, we're going to do one double crochet. So the next 10 stitches. Okay, once we've completed the 10 stitches, that means we've used 12 of our stitches and stitch number 13 is a corner. So we're going to put three double crochets into stitch number 13. Okay. 
So until you really get things going, you might want to mark the center stitch of your corner where you did the three double crochets. Because every time we get to that, for quite some time, we will be adding three double crochets into that stitch to keep turning that corner. Okay, so I marked mine. So I have 26 stitches that go across the back. So for the next 26 stitches, I want one double crochet in each one. Okay, so sometimes it's easier to count the remaining stitches versus counting what you've already done. So if my 26 is correct, I should have 13 foundation single crochets left to work into. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so now we're working in the reverse. Stitch number 13 is our corner. So we put three double crochets into that same stitch. We're going to mark the middle. And we're going to double crochet till we get down to the last two stitches. One in each stitch. Okay, when you get to the second to the last stitch, it is three double crochets because that is a corner. We're going to mark our middle stitch. And then the last stitch is an increase. So we do two double crochets. That's the one. And two. So you're looking something funky like this. After a couple of rows, you'll really see what is going on. But it folds like that. So this is going over the shoulder, and that is the back. Okay, so for double crochet row number two, we're going to chain two, turn our work, and place one double crochet into that first stitch because that is an increased stitch. The beginning and ending of every row is an increased stitch for several rows. Okay, so then it's single crochet into each stitch until we get to our stitch marker. Where our stitch marker is, that is a corner, so we do three double crochets. Mark our center stitch. One double crochet all the way across until you reach your next stitch marker. We've made it to the stitch marker, and that stitch gets three double crochets because it is a corner. Mark our center stitch. And do one double crochet all the way across until you get to your next stitch marker. Made it to my next stitch marker, which is a corner, so it gets three double crochets.
marking my center stitch. One double crochet until you get to your next stitch marker. The next stitch marker, we place three double crochets. Mark my middle stitch. And then one, two. Now our chain two, that was our turning chain, that's our last stitch. So in the top of that chain two, some people do a chain three. I do a chain two because it helps my sides stay nice and straight. So in the top of that chain two, we're gonna place two double crochets because it is an increase stitch. And in case I forgot to mention why we're doing an increase at the beginning and the end of each row, that is because our sweater is going to start off with a V-neck so it doesn't choke us. It's hard to tell yet, but it's starting to slant in. Okay, so we're going to chain two, turn our work. First stitch is an increase stitch. And we're going to repeat the same thing that we just did in the last row for two more rows. This one that we're on and one more. And I will meet you back when I get those two rows done. After our four rows, this is how it's looking. You can start to see how it's taking that V-neck shape and it's time to change colors. Now, this part takes some patience because you're gonna work with some bobbins. If you've never worked with bobbins before, basically it's just multiple skeins of yarn. Now what I've done is, our next color is rose, okay? I have made myself two small balls of yarn because I need three bobbins of the rose. And I have two, which they don't need to be this big, it's just because I frogged it out of my first try. So I have two of the taffy. And we're going to fasten off the taffy. And we're gonna start with our rows rows with one of the smaller balls because we're not going to use as much on the, the part as we will on the back part of it. Okay, so we are going to attach and chain two because this is still an increase stitch. And we're gonna put two, or excuse me, one more double crochet into that same stitch. One into each stitch until we get to the corner. So the reason that you need the bobbins is if you look at her sweater, this top color that goes across her shoulders goes in both directions out to like a triangle. So we're making that shape in the taffy color. And the rose color here is going to be the main color for the sweater. Okay, 
When you get to the middle stitch, you're going to do all three double crochets into that um, uh, corner stitch there. And on the last stitch, don't complete it. Just pull through two. And now we want to bring on one of our taffy bobbins to complete the stitch. Okay, so one of the things with this is whichever side that you drop your yarn on, you will always drop your yarn on the same side. Not meaning, oh, I always drop in the back or always drop in the front. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second when we get there. Oops. So now we're going to work our way across to the next corner space with one double crochet in each stitch. See how we did that corner there? Let me put my stitch marker back in. At this point, for me, it's more of a reminder that, hey, we gotta do that here so that I don't just keep trucking along. Okay, this time we stop at the stitch right before our corner and we don't complete that stitch and we're going to bring on our larger bobbin of our rose color. Complete that stitch. Once again, I dropped my yarn to the back. I'm going to do three double crochets into my corner stitch there. Okay, and then one double crochet one double crochet into each stitch including all right, one double crochet in each stitch until we get to our next corner. When we reach the corner, we would do three double crochets still in the rows. And on that third stitch, don't complete it. We need to change colors again. So the worst part about this is not getting our yarn tangled. So keep your bobbins straight. Like when you turn your work, adjust your bobbins so you don't end up with a tangled mess. All right, so my, yep, I got the right one. Okay, so I'm bringing on my taffy. dropping my rose to the back because that's how I've done all the other ones is on the back. And we're going to do one, one double crochet in each stitch until we reach our next corner space. Okay, we stop at the stitch before the corner stitch there and we don't complete it. And we're bringing on our last bobbin of the rows. Dropping my yarn to the back of my work. And in that corner stitch, three double crochets. Okay. 
one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the end. And that very last stitch is, you guessed it, it is an increased stitch. So we can continue making our V-neck. Last stitch, we get two for the increase. Okay, now we want to chain two. We're going to turn our work. And we are going to move our bobbins around. So, the last bobbin I used gets moved first. Then the second to the last. Then the one in the middle. We're gonna pull it up so we can move the other ones. Third, and the very last one. And that is gonna keep us from tangling up our bobbins. And trust me, it takes you a minute to do that, but it'll make your life so much easier in the long run to not have to untangle all these strings of yarn. The good part is it's only in this top section of our sweater. Okay, so now we are going to do a return row. We put a second stitch because that's the end. The first stitch is an increase. So our chain two and one double crochet counts as our increase one double crochet until we get to the corner. Corner stitch gets three. Mark our middle stitch. Okay, so now that we turned our work, where we dropped our yarn is in the front. So each time we change colors, we are gonna drop our yarn to the front. So you always drop it to the same side as you pick up the next color, the same side that that came from. Okay, so I have one, we're gonna go one double crochet into the very first stitch of the uh, taffy. And bringing my yarn forward, bringing up my other color, and changing to complete the stitch. Okay, so you see how this is here from us carrying up our yarn? That's why you always want to drop it to the same side so that you will have a right side and a wrong side because of the, uh, the color work here. So you always, same side, okay? And then we're gonna work our way across until we get to the second to the last stitch of this color. Okay, I'm at the second to the last stitch. I do not complete my work. My yarn comes forward. I bring up my other color and pull through. Now this stitch, when it's coming at our hook, we can hide that ugliness a little bit. So we're gonna just go around it and do our double crochet. And you can go around it again. And that helps it to blend in a whole lot better. So we're at our middle stitch. We're gonna do our three. Mark the middle again. Okay. 
Oh my goodness. Work my way across, go around the corner, and I'm gonna do my last stitch in the very first stitch of the other color. I'm at my first stitch of my taffy color. I do not complete it. I'm bringing my yarn forward, finish off the stitch, and then work my way over to the next spot, which will be the second to the last of the taffy color. Okay, I am at that second to the last stitch. Bring my yarn forward. Bring up my other color. Complete my stitch. And double crochet my way to the end. Okay, I'm at the last stitch, which is my chain two from the row below. So I do two double crochets for that increase. Chain three, or chain two, <laughs> turn my work and reposition my bobbins, starting with the last ones used first. Bring the middle out of the way. So that's upside down, but can you tell over here, we're starting to do our decrease and it's gonna come out to a triangle point on each side. A couple more rows and it'll really show. When you open it up like this, let me turn it this way, you can see it, the gradual decrease. Okay. What did I do? All that flipping it around. No. No, here we go. <laughs> okay, so I'm doing my increase and I'm gonna work my way all the way around into the first stitch of the other color, of the taffy color. Stop at the second, in the second to the last and do my color change. We're gonna increase the rows by one stitch on each side until we come down to, we have two stitches left and we can't do that anymore. So we're just gonna keep doing those rows until we don't need to use the pink anymore. So just keep working away. I'll show you one more time when I get to the color change, how to do it. You have to remember the position of where you're dropping your where you're dropping your color so that you don't end up with those unsightly carries on both sides of your work. You only want it on one side and that becomes like the inside of your sweater.
Okay, so we start, we work into the first stitch of the taffy color and I'm bringing my yarn up from the back. So I'm dropping that color to the back. Tighten it down just a little bit and work my way across. Sounds like it's starting to rain. Hopefully it cools it off a little. Okay. At the second to the last stitch, drop my yarn to the back, bring up my other color, finish the stitch, tighten it down just a little bit, and carry on. All right, I think you guys have this under control. I will meet you back when I have worked my way around and completed the decreasing of the taffy. So once you've finished where you're down to just the two, you are done with your shoulder neckline color minus taffy. So now you, what you need to do is put this on yourself and you want to measure how much further do you need to go for it to come to underneath the armpits. I know that I need to do three more rows. So mine is a total of 16 double crochet rows and then I can connect the underarm part. So when I get my three rows done, I've disconnected all my bobbins. I'll finish up this one and then reattach my, my bigger one. And I'll show you how to connect the underarm part. So this, this was the hard part. We are done with the hard part. And see how it came to the triangle? And that sits on the shoulder. So we just did the hard part. The rest of it's a it's a breeze, piece of cake. So let me do my three rows and I'll be back. Actually, it is two more rows and on the 16th row, we're gonna connect the underarms. So I need to do my two more rows and I'll come back and show you how to connect the underarms. And very shortly here, we are going to stop doing increases. So, but not yet. All right, let me do my two rows and I'll come back when I'm to the point of connecting the underarm. Okay, once you finish that 16th row, you should try this on and make sure that you've got the space in the armpit that you want to have. So the next step, once you reach your desired space amount is double crochet it is the double crochet to the center stitch in this corner so work your way over there okay so I am at I am at that middle stitch and when we're going to join to the middle stitch of the next corner to form the armhole. Now this is your opportunity to give yourself space to go around your bust and your torso. You know, some of us are more busty than others. Some of us have bigger bellies than others. Some of us might have a little wider hips than others. So this is your chance to add that extra space. So I had already tested this before and for Jenna's comfort and the way she likes it to fit, because remember this is a baggy slouchy type sweater, we're going to chain eight. You make as many stitches as you need. It might be less, it might be more. 
So we chain eight and then we come over to the middle stitch of this side corner and do a double crochet. Okay, so we just connected that and formed our armhole. So now we have to work our way around to the other side. Just double crochets. Okay, I am to that corner stitch. I'm going to do the same thing to this side as we did the other. However many you chained. For me, it's eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and attach to the middle stitch in this corner. Double crochet and work our way to the end. Okay, so that was our last increase row. So we're just going to chain two, turn our work, and we're not adding another stitch there. We're just moving over to the next stitch, working our way back across to where the sleeve is at, or will be at, the armhole is at. Okay, so when you make it to your chain space, make sure you're not twisted and you only want to go into one piece of the chain because we have to work our sleeve into the other side of it. So you're going to double crochet across one stitch in each one of the chains using just one loop of the chain. Okay, then you work your way across the back side of it over to the other armhole and do the same thing. And when you get to the end of this row, keep in mind, no increase. There'll be only one double crochet in the last stitch of this row. After you finish this row, try it on again. Make sure that you have that comfort that you need for under your arms. I mean, you don't want to keep going and to pull out one or two rows is a lot better than getting to your desired length and then finding out uh, your arms are being strangled because you didn't give yourself enough space for the armholes. So double check that. Also, we no longer have corners because we have attached them all. And so it's just like straight rows going back and forth. This is the part that becomes mindless and you can just sit in front of the tube and watch some YouTube, um, watch some TV listen to your radio, whatever your thing is. Okay, I am back to my chain space there, making sure I'm not twisted. Double crocheting into only one loop on the chain. Eight stitches because my chain is eight. It's two. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and then all the way over to the end. OK, 
Okay, and at the end of the row, I'm only doing one stitch, no increase, chain two, and turn. Now, like I said, this is where you want to try it on again and make sure that you gave yourself enough space. Okay, so try it on again and make sure you gave yourself enough space. There should be plenty. Remember, it's a slouchy sweater. And like I said, this one is a medium to a large size. To me, it looks ginormous, but because it is a baggy slouchy sweater, it's going to look ginormous. Okay, so the next steps, we've got the hard part done. We're just going to work on length. And you're going to keep trying it on till it gets to almost where you want it to be. Because we have two other colors that get added to the bottom of the, the sweater, like um, a decorative border, but two other colors. And that's going to take approximately five to six rows. So as you're trying it on, you know, how long do you want it? Since it's a slouchy sweater, I would think if you took this color to like the bottom of your butt cheeks, and we're all different heights, so I can't tell you exact row count for yourself. So just keep trying it on. Grow this down until when you're wearing it, it comes right to the bottom of your butt cheeks. And then we will continue from there. All right, so this is where we are at. Got my taffy pink for the top, my rose pink for the main color, and I'm getting ready to start one of the stripes at the bottom. Now what I did is I did 23 rows, starting from here where it connects at the underarm, to the bottom and I keep having Jenna try it on so that I know where I'm at with the length because we still have more rows to add to the bottom of this and the amount of rows is going to depend on how you like it how tall you are how um, short you are and how you like your things so the next color is kind of a purplish pink and I'm going to be using raspberry. That is the, the one of the five shades that I have that looks kind of like a purple pink. So that's where we're going with that. So we're just going to, so this is where I left off. So my next row should start there so that we stay in sequence with our back and forth and our turning. All right, so I'm going to fasten on with a standing double crochet. You can fasten on any way you like. This just happens to be my preference. Okay, and then I'm going to do, then I'm going to do two rows of raspberry. And then I'll come back because we get to do something else to this. And when we finished with that, then we get to start on the sleeves. So two rows of raspberry and we will meet back. Okay, we have our two rows of raspberry, and now it is time for our lightest pink color. So we have taffy, rose, raspberry, and our lightest pink color is going to be ballet pink. So once again, I'm going to attach with a standing double crochet.
So we're going to do four rows of ballet pink in the same stitch we've been doing, double crochets. When I complete the four rows, I will meet you back here, and then it will be time to work on the sleeves. Okay, so we've finished our two rows of raspberry and four rows of ballet pink. Now it's time for the sleeves. I have already worked up one sleeve. This is um, fuchsia. That's our final trim color. So in order to do the sleeve, so in order to do the sleeve, this part here is where we did our chain. Now mine had eight. Yours may be different. So we want to start in the middle And I'm going to start with a standing double crochet. I'm going to do two more. So yours, yours might be a little different. So you work your way over to where the turn is and you can tell the turn is because it's the side of the double crochet. And here you want to do two double crochets together. So you're gonna go in and only do half the stitch and then come over into the next part and do half of another stitch and then finish off the stitch. Then we're going to do another two double crochets together because we're rounding that corner. And then we're going to double crochet all the way around into each stitch. You should have regular stitches now. So on this part, I encourage you to take notes so that both of your sleeves end up exactly the same. You want to do the same thing on both sides of your sweater so that it is balanced. And it is super easy to get caught up in the moment and just wing it. Now I'm around to the other side of the sleeve or armhole, and I had three double crochets, two double crochets together, two double crochets together, 41 double crochets. Now I'm going to do two double crochets together. and another two double crochets together. Then I should have three more double crochets and then a slip stitch to join, chain up. 
Now, you want to turn your work. If you do not turn your work, your joining seam is going to spin around your sleeve. And we want to keep that as straight as we can. Okay, so we have our chain three. That counts as a double. The next thing we want to do is two double crochets together. And then double crochet all the way around. You'll go all the way around till you have three stitches remaining. When you get to when you get to the last three stitches, you're going to do two double crochets together, a double crochet, and then join to the top of your chain three with a slip stitch, chain, and turn your work. Now at this point, your sweater is going to be quite bulky, so you just got to kind of deal with it. Get in a comfortable spot where you have room to flip things around. So row three, you have your turning chain there, and you're going to do two double crochets together. Work your way all the way around till you get to the last three stitches. Once you make it to the last three stitches, it is two double crochets together. Then a double crochet and slip stitch to join, chain three, and turn your work. This is row four, so we do two double crochets together. Work our way all the way around to the last three stitches. When you get to the last three stitches, it is two double crochets together. And a double crochet. And slip stitch to join. So that is the last round of, for now, of doing the decreases. Now my other sleeve, I have a total of 23 rows of this color. So I have 19 more to go. And when I get done with those 19 rows, I will meet you right back here on the screen and show you what to do next. Okay, so I've completed my 23 rows. Turn my work. And now we want to switch over to our purple pink color, which is raspberry for me. And I'm attaching with a standing double crochet. So what we want to do here is we need to start reducing the amount of stitches that we have for the, uh, the cuff of the sleeve. So what I'm doing with mine is two double crochets. That counts as one. That's two. And then two double crochets together.
and then two double crochets. And two together. Two doubles. and two together. And you're gonna repeat that sequence all the way around. And then we're going to change colors again. So when you finish that round, you're gonna bring on your lightest pink. For me, it is ballet pink. Turn your work. And we're going to fasten on with a standing double crochet. And on the first round, we are just going to double crochet all the way around. Okay, join the round, chain three, turn, and on the second round of this color, you'll do two double crochets, that counts as one, and then two double crochets together for a decrease. Two double crochets. Two double crochets together and you just alternate that all the way around to the other side so once you've completed your second round we're going to bring on our final trim color which is fuchsia it's supposed to be like a reddish pink and we're going to do a round of single crochet but this round also has to include a couple of decreases. Need to turn our work. Okay, so this round needs to include a couple of decreases. We, um, I have 27 stitches and to make this identical to my other sleeve, I need to bring it down to 24. So I'm going to fasten on with a standing single. And every so often, I'm going to make a decrease. So I, I need to do three of them. And I'm going to try and space them out. And a single crochet decrease is the same thing. It is two single crochets together going into one stitch and then the next. This will be my second one. And then I will need one more, but I will do it at the end of the round. slip stitch to join, chain, turn your work, and do one full round of regular double crochet. Your chain counts as one. Okay, when you complete that round, slip stitch to join, chain up and now we're going to alternate from front post and back post so front it's a double 
and then around the back. The double. Then the front. And then the back. So you're just going to rotate front, back, front, back, all the way around. And I will meet you back at the end of this round. At the end of the round, slip stitch to join, turn your work. And now you're going to do the same stitch that you did on the previous round. So if this is a front post, you do a front post. If it is a back post, you do a back post. Front and back. So you're gonna repeat that all the way around and then you will fasten off and then we'll be on the final stage of our sweater and that is putting the border around the rest of the project. Okay, at the end, fasten off. Leave yourself a long enough tail to weave in. Now this step is the step where we're going to put a border along the side. And usually the rule of thumb is if you have a double crochet, it would take two stitches, but sometimes that's too much. So you're gonna have to kind of wing it. You don't want it to pull. You don't want it to ruffle up. You just have, you just kind of have to go with the flow and make it, make it come out. Okay. So I'm going to start at the bottom. With a standing double crochet. So what I think I'm gonna do is put one in here, one in the connecting piece, one in the open space, one in the connecting piece and see how that goes. And then it would be um, like easy to keep track of so that we have the same amount of stitches on both sides of our sweater. So one through here, one in the connecting piece, one through there, one in the connecting piece. Okay, and it does not appear to be pulling or ruffling, so that might just work out. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go all the way around. When you get up to the neck, you're gonna come around the corner, and in the neck, this is where you're, you have an opportunity to tighten it up a little if it's a little too loose for you. So you can do decreases in the neck area, especially in the corners. And what you would do is single crochet in this stitch and skip that middle and single crochet there, like two single crochets together, make it into one stitch. I'll show you when I get there. Okay, so I am on the collar part. working my way towards that corner. And depending on how loose um, the neckline is on you, you can pick up or do decreased stitches along the way. All right, so we're at the corner. So I'm gonna go into this stitch 
skip that one and come over to this one. And do two single crochets together. And work my way along the back of the neck. Okay, so I'm at the next corner, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Don't complete the stitch, skip the corner, and go into the next one and do two single crochets together. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Then you're gonna go down the other side. And then you have to make a choice if you want I think I'm going to do one row of the trim along the bottom just to make it look finished, even though the images that I've seen doesn't show that along the bottom, but I'm going to just to make it look finished. So I'm going to finish working on mine, work my way around, and when I get ready for row two, I will meet you back. Okay, so I have made it completely around the edge. Now I'm going to come back up and do round two, but when I get to the other side of my sweater, I'm going to stop and turn around and come back because I'm only doing one row along the bottom. This is also the part where you need to decide if you're going to put buttons on your sweater or not. Jenna wants buttons, so I have to get some buttons. So just uh, continue around. Single crochet. Okay, I will meet you back when I complete my second row of trim. So for row three of our trim, this is where we're gonna wanna do our buttonholes. So I've marked off at the top of like where my V-neck stopped and it was a total of 60 stitches. So in order to get my buttons even, I need to do 17 single crochets. I'm at 11. This would be 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Now my buttonhole, I'm going to chain three, skip three, one, two, three, and then start counting 17 again. So that should be our last skipped stitch is 20. So where we reattach, that's one, two, three, 14, 15, 16, 17, chain three, skip three, and start counting to 17 again. So one, two, three, 16, 17, chain three, skip three, and attach. And then work your west, work the rest of the way around like normal. And when we 
chain one and turn to come back the other direction. When you get to where the buttonhole is, you just put three, you just put three single crochets into the chain space there and keep going along till you get to the end. And I'll meet you back when I have completed my rounds. So that is how your buttonhole should look. Now we're gonna do one more round for the trim and this time we're gonna go in around the entire sweater. We're gonna turn, go up to one side, around the collar, down the other, down around the bottom, till we end up right back here where we started. And then the only thing left after that is sewing on buttons. Okay, so other than the buttons, it's finished and I lied. You had one more thing to do besides sewing on your buttons and that is work in any ends that you didn't work in as you went along. But uh, it's looking really good. This thing came out really baggy the way Jenna wanted it on me. It goes to my knees. <laughs> So it's like, definitely like a coat. Um, but yeah, as soon as I get my buttons, I'll sew them on. And uh, I'm just gonna use my <sighs> fuchsia yarn to attach them. And uh, I only need three. So there you have it. Gwen Stacy's kind of pink sweater.